Despite the alarming jump in road deaths from 12 in the first quarter of last year to 22 for the same period this year, the Roads and Traffic Authority remains satisfied that road safety initiatives are on the right track. The quarterly road figures are not a fair indication of long-term trends. In fact, the total yearly road deaths averaged over three years shows a 15% drop. According to the Transport Minister's Department, the doubling of quarterly figures is sadly a return to the norm. The department points out that six council regions in the Hunter recorded no deaths in the first quarter of last year, an extremely unusual result. RTA spokesman Ben Dalton says quarterly figures don't provide a long-term understanding of motorist behaviour. The RTA always takes seriously any increase in, uh, in fatalities or, or serious injuries and we have, as a matter of uh, course, looked very carefully at the, uh, at the figures. Police analysis of road deaths don't point to any clear trends either, but they say it is significant that a high proportion of deaths were pedestrians. Equally significant, a continuing high death rate among young male drivers and their passengers. Not surprisingly, they will continue to be the main target of driver education programs. Tom Hilston, NBN News. He's called an unsung hero, a quiet achiever. Whatever his title, Paul Marquette knows how to make a hit. Marquette averages 40 tackles a game and has topped 50. While he admits defence is his strong point, he does have other skills. I like to take the ball up, kick chase and put pressure on their kicker if possible. It all helps the team and that's what I'd like to do. One of the proudest nights, the former Raymond Terrace Jr. is one of five homegrown players in first grade. Encouraging news for the team tonight with John Schuster rating himself as a 70% chance to play Cronulla. The centre injured his knee in last weekend's game against the Panthers. It's improving every day so hopefully uh, by Saturday before Sunday we will uh, heal up alright. McKillop Davy swam well inside the Olympic qualifying time in finishing second to the brilliant Martin Roberts. Roberts' time of 1 minute 58.68 was nearly two seconds better than the Eric Arnold swimmer's time. The move by McKillop Davies to the junction pool has paid handsome dividends and it is hoped he can improve on the time he registered yesterday in the months of hard training ahead before the Australian team flies out for Spain. Surging floodwaters in the Wallace Creek rapidly eroded foundations around the culvert. Within hours, it was showing signs of collapse. The Mount Vincent Road, or Main Road 220, is a feeder taking traffic from the F3 freeway north into Maitland and from there onto the New England Highway. The RTA says repairs are underway, but the road is closed indefinitely. Traffic is being diverted onto the Doylson and Morrisett interchanges further south. Freeway exit traffic is also reportedly suffering problems on the Awaba Road west of Toronto. The overnight downpour has caused localised flooding across the Hunter. Further west, Wallumbi is experiencing familiar flooding after rainfall of more than 70 millimetres burst the banks at Payne's Crossing on Main Road 181 and south of the town towards Buckety. Eastward, the town's only remaining link is passable with extreme care. Elsewhere, localised flooding has once again inundated farming properties. Many local roads are underwater, although not everyone found them impassable. The downpour hasn't been evenly registered. While most gauges recorded between 50 to 70 millimetres, there were exceptions. One gauge at Blackhalls Park on Western Lake Macquarie recorded more than 160 millimetres overnight. The rainfall had other indirect consequences. A truck lost control on the Pacific Highway at North Belmont, demolishing a power pole and blacking out the surrounding suburbs for several hours until power was finally restored at about 7.30 this morning. Tom Hilston, NBN News. ICAC has been told Charles Fuller took month-long periods of sick leave in 1989, claiming benefits from both the SRA and two insurance companies. In his diary, he talks of buying his doctor a bottle of Scotch whisky. 
counsel assisting the inquiry, Carolyn Davenport, asked Fuller, is there any connection between his getting a doctor's certificate and the doctor getting a bottle of scotch? Fuller replied, I doubt it. Fuller's diary also tells that during his sick leave he went water skiing, drove his speedboat on the Gold Coast and bought earth moving machinery which worked on an SRA site at Braunston near Grafton. One of those machines was a dozer. Fuller maintained he wasn't operating the dozer on the Braunston site, he was merely playing. When Assistant Commissioner Ronald Sackville QC asked him to explain what he meant by playing, he replied, just driving it around in circles. Davenport asked, did he think there was anything wrong with taking sick leave and doing other work? Fuller said, no. The former train driver also denied buying a radar detector for SRA Chief of Works Geoffrey Elms. The hearing continues on Monday. Anthony Griffiths, NBN News. American boy wonder Kelly Slater hit the water early this morning to face a solid but messy 1.5 metre swell. He survived a controversial interference call and some dubious wave selection to progress through the trials and the first round of the main event. Pretty tricky little spot, but uh, you know I got a few waves and I was pretty happy with that. Port Macquarie's Marcus Brabant was another standout and a Voca wildcard Mark Sainsbury served an exceptional heat to qualify for round two. Howling winds chopped up the surf as the world's best women took centre stage. Pam Burridge, Michelle Donoghue and Wendy Botha all progressed and Kingscliff's Kylie Webb survived this horror wipeout to defeat Nerida Falconer. I thought if I jumped straight into the middle of the wave I'd go under it but I opened my eyes up and I saw it just go straight over the top of me and then I felt myself just getting sucked down and then I was in the washing machine. Ratings leader Jodie Cooper began well but poor tactics saw her lose to Cathy Newman. The big loser today was professional surfing itself. The controversy currently surrounding sponsorship in Australia has cost the sport a three-year, six million dollar deal with Carlton and United Breweries. Well, obviously disappointing and sort of a devastating blow in that this was, uh, would have been the culmination of, some, of a pipe dream for professional surfing and would have uh, provided a great financial muscle for the, for the two around the world. Round two of the men's main event was full of drama. Nora Head's Glenn Winton found a freak tube to beat American Dino and Dino, and Mitch Thorson was given a free ride against Bryce Ellis, who was told the wrong heat time by an official and didn't turn up. In the final heat of the day, young trialist Jake Spooner caused another sensation by ousting a disappointing Barton Lynch. Most probably the worst heat I've had in, I don't know, maybe a year or two, so it was a shocker, but uh, it's not the end of the world. Bruce McKenzie, NBN News. The conference started with 800 Rotary members taking over the auditorium of Tamworth Workmen's Club. The theme for this year's conference is the quality of life and features include the usual awards and addresses. Visiting Brazilian Rotarians lead the study teams. Other highlights of the three-day gathering include the presence of international Rotarian Hugh Archer and visiting exchange students. Organisers feel the students' presence will add to the overall success of the conference. In view of our attempts to build goodwill and international relations, it's an excellent presentation. Lawrence Hoynes believes banks are a law unto themselves. We've actually shown factually from the bank's own records just what they're doing and hopefully this is opening the minds of the victims so they can see that they can in fact get redress against their banks which they really desperately need. His experience with banks hasn't been at all good. He was sued by one over a company debt which he said had already been paid. He's published a self-help manual provoked by his own experience and what he sees as the bank's organised misery against borrowers. At today's workshop, he challenged bankers to disprove his allegations.
And the official result, Adios Bounty got the nod from Alligator Jack and Protester. The time, 1 minute 24.4. At the Port Macquarie RSL, the cream of Queensland's and New South Wales black belt taekwondo exponents are attending a two-day conference and the 75 martial artists form the biggest ever gathering of black belts in any style to meet in the country. Besides the improving of techniques, the area of discipline within the academy is a key subject as is the formation of new patterns for brown belt taekwondo practitioners. It is hoped that this weekend's conference will be the forerunner of an annual talk fest designed to foster the sport. Alan McMahon resigned last year as coach of the Newcastle Knights in the depth of the young club's worst season. At the same time, a separate controversy had surfaced over control of the rescue helicopter service. One issue shook the faith of home team fans, the other rattled the confidence of Hunter fundraisers, afraid that hard-won local charity dollars to keep the rescue helicopter flying were being siphoned off into the consolidated revenue of the Surf Lifesaving Association. Months later, there's still a lot of patching up to be done. I think basically to cement back the, the business sector support, the community support uh, for a vital community need. Hopefully no harm's been done to the, to the community really from it all because basically it is a service run for the, for the people of the, of the Hunter Valley and that's the most important thing. The controversy saw the sacking of former marketing manager John Skeen and a protracted legal battle to establish who controlled the service. The Attorney General stepped in to recommend the recruitment of Hunter representatives to the helicopter board and independent auditing of funds. Chairman of the board Scott Derwin's resignation will see him take up a new position with the Surf Lifesaving Association. Alan McMahon is keen to start picking up the pieces in his new role as business manager. Firstly, I don't have to leave Newcastle, and that was one of the things that well, did haunt me, is the fact that uh, um, I might have had to leave the area, but fortunately now I don't. It is a different career, but basically it's one of servicing the community, and I'm very pleased about it. Many already regard the lake as a little piece of paradise, but on a holiday maker's road map, Lake Macquarie is regarded as a whistle stop on the way to Port Macquarie. The Sydney siders seem to have it entrenched in their minds that a holiday is not really a holiday unless they suffer a hell to get to their eventual destination. Uh, we're way behind uh, Port Stephens, way behind uh, Cessnock and the vineyards. They, they've got years on us. Um, but we'll catch up pretty quick. With the launching of a new media campaign and the opening of a tourist information centre on the Pacific Highway, locals hope to reel in a bigger share of the passing tourist trade. The new centre will also coordinate a concerted effort by tourist operators to sell a package of attractions. It's been a long time coming. Um, it's over the last 20 odd years, uh, the various committees have been uh, working towards this day. Mm -hmm. And uh, while we're here, The troops assembled today to decide whether to continue their fight. Last Friday, area health boss Dr Tim Smythe unexpectedly sent removalists through the picket line to get what he wanted. The police were called in and much of the equipment removed. On Dr Smythe's side of the battle lines, the removal of the hospital equipment could be seen as a victory. But over here among the picketers, they say the war is far from over. Yes, they're going to stay and they're going to sort of up the campaign is the words I think I just heard them use. So yes, we're going to hang in. 
So the picket line will not be swept away before Health Minister Ron Phillips makes his long-awaited visit to Newcastle on the 22nd of April. There's a resolution being passed that we seek uh, a, a conference with him, but also uh, we organise a uh, joint demonstration against Phillips uh, because of the, his actions in closing this hospital. Peter Barrick says the community has strengthened its resolve that the Walls End Hospital site will once again be used for public health. Jane Anderson, NBN News. Only a football's kick away from the Knights' home ground at the International Sports Centre, the Doran Group wants to build much more than just a club for the Red and Blues followers. The company wants to turn this four-hectare tract of government land into what it calls a sporting hotel complex. A 224-room major four-star hotel in conjunction with a brand new club for the Knights and sports medicine and fitness facilities. Mr Green says the $55 million proposal would be financed by private investors and has been developed with the Knights Board over the past nine months. The Knights Board have had full input during the last uh, nine months and uh, they're fully up to speed with the overall proposal. But Knights Chairman Michael Hill says the club has had little input into the proposal. We know about it in principle, we know the relationship of the size of the club to the size of the hotel. Um, we're important to the project because the, the club makes the hotel work and vice versa. Doran believes the complex could be completed by November next year. Mr Hill says more steps need to be taken before any plans for a club are turned into bricks and mortar. We've applied to the federal government for a grant to enable us to uh, conduct a feasibility study into where we should build a club, if we should build a club, and this proposal at Broadmeadow would be one of those proposals that we would consider when we got the money for the feasibility study. The Knights chairman says in the past month alone, two proposals for a league's club have been presented to the board. Scott Bevan, MBN News. Since Friday, this major link road to the Newcastle Sydney Freeway has been closed due to a culvert at Mulbring collapsing under the flow of floodwaters. But all those thousands of vehicles that use Main Road 220 daily have to go somewhere, and it's through the western side of Lake Macquarie they're passing. Signs highlighting the closure of the road between Curry Curry and Freeman's waterholes are detouring traffic through Toronto. According to Toronto Police, the number of vehicles passing through the suburb has jumped by more than 50% in the past four days. For the businesses, it's been a boom time. Any extra business is always good, so uh, we'll take what we can get any time. The heavier traffic flows are less welcome in nearby Wakefield. Trucks are rumbling along roads designed for only light vehicles. Some of the heavy interstate vehicles are finding their way through there and our ordnance inspectors are active on that road and are uh, booking uh, the offenders. Mr Cross says the greater number of cars and trucks using routes around Lake Macquarie could chop up the roads, but that can't be checked until the traffic flow returns to normal. And that's not likely until the end of the week when the damaged culvert is expected to be repaired and Main Road 220 reopened. Scott Bevan, MBN News. State Transit is about to pull a $6 million rug out from under Newcastle buses. Known as the Community Service Obligation, that's how much is needed to keep transport running on non-profitable routes. Without the money, unions say a business that was running at a tidy profit now posts a considerable loss. Bottom line is that the government is reducing the community service obligations to Newcastle buses and what it is doing is creating losses that don't presently exist. 
uh, we can argue, as I said, about figures uh, all day long, but the government has said we uh, will probably not be getting our CSO, certainly we'll be getting a reduced CSO, and we have to get our costs down so if, we, if we want to sign commercial contracts come 1st of July this year. Underlining the equation is the gradual reduction of the workforce at Newcastle Buses and its ability to keep up existing services. If the latest across the board 106 job cuts go ahead as voluntary redundancies, the service will have seen a 45% reduction of personnel since 1988. Yet the government maintains ticket, route and concession policies will not change. If you remove the CSO payments out of Newcastle buses without remo removing the community service bus services, then the place operates at a loss. What we're saying is that if the government no longer wants to fund community service bus services, they should be uh, up front and tell the community that that's what they're about. But what they, they're about is making the workers pay for the community bus services. 80% of our uh, costs are in wages and salaries. Uh, that is the only area that we can uh, attack and get our costs down because the other 20% are in fixed costs. The management of Newcastle buses insists the service is not being trimmed to make it an attractive package for privatisation. The government buses in Newcastle will not be privatised. Previously, these two teams have met on 26 occasions, with the Giants holding sway 16-10. The Falcons without a win against the 1990 NBL champion since June 89. But it's a brand new ball game for both teams. The Giants hammered by Adelaide and the Falcons flattened by the Gold Coast in the opening round this year. And the players are aware of where improvement is needed. We weren't happy with the way we played. Um, all statistics we were beaten in. Uh, we only got to the line nine times. That, that's definitely got to change tonight if uh, we have any chance against Newcastle. But we still have a few things that we have to work on as far as with our offense. Um, I think our defense is there for the most part day in and day out. It's just a matter of getting over them, um, having high peaks in the game and then having you know lows. Opposing coaches Tom Weisman of the Fosters Falcons and Bruce Palmer of the Be Your Best Giants have a healthy respect for each other. This game is, is going to be tough. North Melbourne are a formidable team. They've been picked ahead of us also. We, we have to make sure we win this one at home. The road loss won't hurt us as much as, as a home loss would, so uh, it's an important game for us and it's a great uh, new opening for our arena. They've got a very good collection of talent, much better than last year, and I think Tom's uh, going to be a very good asset for the franchise. He's a very good coach who's going to get the most out of that talent. So. They're a team that, that I personally feel is going to be the, the big improver this year. With a win over the North Melbourne Giants in the playoff for third in the Kmart Classic, the Falcons will have a slight psychological advantage, but the battle of the boards will decide the outcome. It's getting to be like the NBA. Every night you got to uh, put out a good effort against a good player, and uh, I guess that's what comes with the territory of being a defensive player of the year. You got to come out there and, and, and put effort every time you go out on the floor. This morning, local business people met at City Hall to hear the Hunter Valley Research Foundation's outlook for the region. Economist Andrew Searle says unemployment in February reached a high of 13% in the Hunter, an increase of 4.3% for the same time last year. This compares with a national unemployment figure of 11.5%. While figures for March nationally were released yesterday, figures for the Hunter won't be available till later this month. The government believes Australia is emerging from the recession and according to Mr Searles those signs are present in the Hunter. One indication is the number of job advertisements. While still falling, the rate of decline has slowed. I think um, toward, the end, toward the middle of this year that we'll start to see an increase in the number of people employed. Mr Searles says the building and coal industries remain the region's strongest sectors. Jody McKay, NBN News.
Tax is a critical element of any business and with the increased record keeping requirements under self-assessment, it's vital people know exactly what's needed. This four hour course launched today is available at 20 different TAFE colleges in the Hunter, the North Coast and the North West. It's especially designed for busy people unable to attend other courses which run over several weeks. We've got to address the whole issues of uh, making education relevant and the tax course is part of that. And to make it relevant, we've got to make it up to date and uh, really there with the changing needs of the community of the Hunter. With emphasis on all aspects of business taxation including PAYE, the provisional payment system, record keeping and the training guarantee, it's a comprehensive course designed to help people get it right first time. And that's of benefit to everyone including the tax department itself. We have a far-reaching program aimed at getting to small business in terms of making them aware of what their obligations are under the tax law. And this is one very important element that people can go to their local TAFE in a four-hour session and, and learn exactly what their obligations are. Mr Doughty says tax course is a key part of a broad program of services the tax office is developing to assist small business. The yacht was towed into Byron Heads late yesterday by the Brunswick fishing trawler Nellie M. It was spotted earlier in the day off Evans Head by a helicopter. The yacht broke its rudder on Thursday morning during the Sydney to Mooloolaba yacht race, leaving it without steering and uncontrollable. The risk was that the boat would blow onto a lee shore uh, and that would have placed the crew in grave danger. The crew maintained constant contact with local and Sydney Coast Guards. Despite the ordeal, the five sailors were unhurt and in good spirits. This afternoon, the 9 metre sloop was fitted with a temporary rudder and was able to make its own way into Brunswick Heads. During his lifetime, Bruce Frost collected a host of bric-a-brac, including 50 books of postcards. Today his estate auctioned these valuable mementos. Some of them date back to the turn of the century. The collection included some rare cards embroidered during World War I. They communicated messages of both hope and sympathy. This book fetched $425. Scenes of most capital cities were represented. Early impressions of Newcastle went under the for $500. Talented halfback Andrew Sheridan has been taken to hospital after suffering what appears to be a dislocated shoulder along with a broken arm. And if confirmed, it seems unlikely he will be available for weeks to come. Ballina opened well and led 8-0 at half time with some determined running and good defence. They nearly scored again after Byron Bay threw a loose pass in desperation to keep the move going. And Ballina gathered to scoot down the left touchline, but the referee held a play for the knock-on. Again, Ballina found easy yards up the middle and Byron had gone to sleep. And pay they did. Michael Colner was able to score a try for Ballina wide out and the Blue and Whites rolled their way to a well-deserved victory.
ACT opened the bedroom, posted first points. Matthew Jones to Michael Twig, who stood and unloaded to Corey Stewart, and they were in under the posts. Back came Newcastle to score a super try. Tony Price instrumental handling twice in the movement, giving the final pass to Brian Quinton, and he streaked away to outpace the defence to level the scores at six all. Tony Price and Trevor Crow combined right on the half-time siren, but the second rower dropped the ball over the line. The vital break came to the defending champions where Brett Christensen sold a huge dummy, and he strolled over unopposed to score under the posts and give Newcastle a six-point lead. From there it was a matter of keeping ACT out and Brett Hode made a try-saving tackle on runaway centre Stuart Stanton to deny the visitors. Newcastle added a penalty before ACT scored just before the end. Sharp to Breen back to Sharp and he found Dixon backing up for a smart try. But it was Newcastle who got home 14-10 to retain the MMI trophy in front of their home crowd. The Narrabri Shire Band is no stranger to competition. It's travelled to America for performances, has won competitions in Tasmania, and now rehearsals are underway for the national titles. Friday's competition will be held in the newly renovated Sydney Town Hall, followed by marches through the city streets over the weekend. The band's main attribute, apart from obvious talent, is the broad age group it encompasses. The youngest member is only 10, while the average age is 16. Bandmaster Steve Moore says he gets the most out of players at this age. Uh, no, I like working with young people. Um, they gen generally give you 100% effort all the time. The sprinkling of adults, he says, provides a stabilising force. Mr Moore remains quietly confident about Friday's performance. Tun Curry Recycling is an initiative of the government's Skillshare job scheme, employing five people on the site to inspect loads as they arrive and assess any reusable materials. We recycle uh, everything uh, that's recyclable just about, like cardboard and paper and glass, uh, metals, uh, batteries, that type of thing. We also collect uh, anything that might be reusable by anybody and we resell it here in the shop and in the yard and uh, with the uh, sales we pay for about half of our wages. But apart from being a self-sustaining boost to employment, the idea is also a winner on environmental grounds. It saves landfill and uh, therefore saving money for all the people in the long run so that they don't have to um, buy more land for a new tip and this one's filled. Lake Macquarie Council had taken an interest in what's happening at Tun Curry, but despite the imminent closure of its redhead tip, it's not planning a similar scheme to Great Lakes. Instead, a waste transfer station will be established at a yet-to-be-determined site on the eastern side of Lake Macquarie for transfer in bulk to the Council's newer facility at Awaba. Meanwhile, at Tun Curry, Council and public alike are hailing their success. All cars top here so we can check their load. That, uh reduces the risk of having toxic waste dropped on the, uh, on the dump and also it gives us the opportunity to check out their loads and uh, remove any valuables before they get to the tip base. Do people mind? Uh, generally speaking, no, they're really good. It seems every time it rains, drivers are getting into trouble on the freeway, particularly on the 10 kilometre section between the Hawkesbury and Calga. Police say many of the accidents are triggered by vehicles travelling too close, but today Roads Minister Wal Murray announced the speed limit would be lowered from 110 to 100 kilometres an hour. He also says the RTA is looking at improving the skid resistance of the road surface and taking other measures to improve conditions in wet weather. Mr Murray says he'll ask the Federal Government to pay the cost of improving the roadway. The lower speed limit will apply at least until any work is completed. The RTA is attempting to have the new limit in place before Easter. <laughs> 